So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be letting people in here. Um, as we uh, come into the room, I mean, I am so honored to have Jeff Young here. Um, Jeff and I, I think, have probably been in touch for many times over the years. And um, one thing I really wanted to ask you, Jeff, is how did you come up with the Namast is kind of like your um, your tag or Namast? Come, come up with what? I'm sorry. Your tag, you know, Namast. Oh, Namaste. Namaste. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Exactly. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, actually, um, I I got one of the people in my network originally way back in the very beginning and when I started teaching this about 13 or 14 years ago called me the LinkedIn guru. Uh, and, and, and as a guru, I just happened to, you know, uh, be connected with a person who is in India, uh, a, a lovely lady by the name of Latsala Shukla. And she and I've been connected uh, a lot of years. And she said, you should greet people with the Indian greeting, which is namaste. And namaste basically means that, that it, it's a, it's a common, uh, a common greeting, and, and you know what? It's even become more popular since there were you know, since the safe distancing and, and nobody can shake hands because now you can actually go like this. It's a common Indian greeting that means the spirit in me honors the spirit in you, okay, in essence. And so it fit with the, with the guru label. So that's how I started using Namaste. And if you ever look at my 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 comments and my quotes, it actually has this. It has Namaste. But if you also get to know me a, uh, a little bit better, uh, yeah, she's got it. Fran's got it. The, the, I'm also I'm also a Star Trek nut, so this one is there as well, <laughs> as a part of the brand. It's a part of my brand. And while we're waiting on other folks, I guess you know I, I should say that uh, again. I did not call my. Sixty-five. I mean, over here. Yes. Have to unmute yourself there. Yeah, I, you know, I just noticed that you muted me. Okay, my mistake. So, yeah. So one of the folks who came to a lot of my uh, a, a lot of my seminars back when I was first doing this, uh, a really good friend walked up to me afterwards, and he'd been to like six or eight of my seminars. And I'm not sure what that says about me or about him. Either I'm a rotten teacher or he's a slow learner. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's either one of those two things. Because LinkedIn is one of those things where you would kind of have to take it bite-sized chunks. So he came back to like six or eight of my seminars. And about the sixth time he came back, he comes up to me afterwards and he says, you know what, Jeff? You're a real guru with this. And I went, mm, guru, yeah, I kind of like the sound of that. I think I'll use that, right? So I, I, I actually looked guru up in the dictionary and it uh, was perfect for me when I found the definition of the word guru because the definition of the word guru is teacher. And I've been a teacher either as a project manager or along those lines, you know, in one form or another for a, a large, large portion of my life. So that's why I took Guru and, and, and started to use it. And I'm trying to earn it every single day. Uh, and, and that's why, you know, I also introduced myself by saying, well, that's kind of why the, the boy in blue behind me here, you might have noticed, uh, you know, the, the Superman in the, in behind me here. That's kind of why he's back there as well, because I also introduced myself by saying, hi, I'm Jeff Young. I'm a teacher. What's your superpower? OK, so so for, and, and oh, by the way, I, you know, I, uh, please don't please forgive me, but I actually came dressed uh, for, the, for the occasion today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my uniform on. My cape is in the wash, unfortunately, but but uh, but but I've got the uniform on and I'm ready to answer anybody's questions and, and so, have a good so time. Um, so I want to welcome everyone, first of all. Um, what I wanted to start with, I wanted to ask Jeff a question right off the bat, because just as a general, because I actually did a post about this a couple weeks ago. So what are some of the basic mistakes or things that, that people don't actually use LinkedIn in the best way for? I mean, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on. There's a lot of, so in your opinion, what do you think people either need to do better or aren't utilizing LinkedIn best for? Okay. Well, it's not as bad as it used to be, but one of the first things that comes to mind, Ken, is people don't spend enough time on LinkedIn to learn how to use it, okay? They, 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 they treat it as just kind of like field of dreams. Uh, if I build my profile, they'll come, okay? And that's not really true. Uh, so, so, you know, I've always found that you get out of LinkedIn what you 
put into LinkedIn. So you need to really learn it. You need to really figure out how to use it. Uh, and, and I'll go back to a, an old quote of my mother's as well. My, my dear departed mother, okay, used to say that a fool with a tool is still a fool. <laughs> so, so learning how to actually use LinkedIn and making it effective for you is extremely important, okay? The other big mistake that I see people make is that they treat it like an online resume and it should never be treated like an online resume. It's not that some of the same information doesn't belong both places, but those two things are two different tools. A resume is a very targeted vehicle that most people who have been through this process for any length of time or a couple of times in terms of job search process, your resume is something that you target, that you tailor for each job description that you're going after. That, and it needs to be like one to two pages usually. Again, that's a rule of thumb. One to two pages in, in, in total, okay, in, in size. LinkedIn is much broader. LinkedIn is a, is a marketing vehicle. LinkedIn is something that you can use to brand yourself, and there is no limit to the size of what you can put on LinkedIn. So it, it's a matter of just putting stuff out there. So it, 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 and there are many things that people don't utilize in as good a fashion as well. The, the top five things that I think you better have a good handle on and have a good brand on on LinkedIn are the background banner or the, the background photo, okay? Your, your profile photo, your name, it has to be, it has to be what, what you want to be called and how you want to be found, okay? Your professional headline, which is right below your name, and your about section. Those five things are, are things that I think people don't really put the proper step, proper foot forward when it comes to, to LinkedIn as well. And, it, you know, and I, you know I've, I've been on LinkedIn since May of 2004. So that doesn't mean that I, you know, I, mean, I might be the guru, right? But that doesn't mean I've never made mistakes on LinkedIn, okay? As an example, when I first got on LinkedIn, remember I told you I was a Star Trek nut, okay? My profile photo when I first got on LinkedIn was a picture of Captain James T. Kirk. Oops. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that was okay. If people wanted to find me, they knew they could find the Star Trek nut that way, right? But that was not the way to represent myself professionally. Okay, uh, not not that no, not that not that William Shatner isn't a, isn't a successful actor, and, and and I would be glad to represent myself as William Shatner. But the but the point being is that that was not the proper professional persona to use uh, in terms of you know in, in terms of what I should have out there for my for my profile photo as an example. So oh, that's great. So what I wanted to do today is. If you if you have questions specifically for um, for Jeff, if you can put them in the chat with a queue for now, and you know as we go along, we can definitely try to open it up um, as much as possible, and I'll try to pick up on some of the questions there and maybe um, you know embellish them a little bit just to make them a little more general. Um, sure, I, I I will say that one of the things I've learned over time is that. People are very challenged in some ways with how to make their headline, you know, make it best. Because I know last week we had Kevin on talking about the whole idea of um, Boolean searches and how the Boolean searches pick it up. And there, honestly, that set a whole firestorm up of questions about do you do it with that with um, slashes and asterisks or anything else? And I'm still really confused, honestly. Um, as far as search is way. concerned, I'm sorry, as far as search is concerned or as far as, as search is concerned and findability, yeah. Um, the, well, searches are, I would, I would eliminate uh, on a regular basis any special characters except those characters that are related to Boolean search. Okay. Uh, I mean, as an example, um, let's say I'm looking for um, uh, the phrase LinkedIn training, okay? Uh, first things I, I would do is that if I'm looking for a phrase instead of just one word, I would put that phrase in quotes because quotes is treating that search argument as a phrase, not just as link, the word LinkedIn and the word training. Okay, so that's the that's a definition of Boolean. In, in other words, in other words, if I if I type in LinkedIn training, LinkedIn will go out there and show me its results for results that have the word LinkedIn in it and the word training in it not necessarily right together. And that's what the quotes do, okay? Now the other operators from a Boolean perspective are if I were searching for LinkedIn training and, 
okay, something else. I can actually put in the actual capital letters A and D and put another phrase or another, or another search item, okay? And then some of the certain things that are there that, that are also useful to use is that sometimes you might not, you want to, might not want a particular phrase, okay? So for example, I had a, a, as a matter of fact, on my first call today, there was somebody asked me, I'm, I'm looking for a, you know, a, a marketing director job, but I don't want, I don't want to find any jobs that have the word S-A-A-S -S in it, okay? So I said, quote, marketing director and dash S-A-A-S -S because of the fact the dash is a negative sign that says not S-A-A-S. -S. So that helps as well. As far so as someone asked about stories. how you felt about LinkedIn stories. It's, it's, well, how do I feel about LinkedIn stories? LinkedIn stories. Yep. I see a few of them. I think they belong on what's it, what's it called WhatsApp or uh, you know or, Instagram or something. Instagram maybe yeah I, I think they belong there I don't think they belong as much on uh, LinkedIn now that's my personal bias okay mm -hmm. I will I will totally admit okay first of all it's my personal bias because I can't do them and I can't and I don't see very many of them on the desktop which is where I spend most of my time on the desktop browser because I believe the desktop browser is a much more effective way to use LinkedIn than this little guy right here, which is too far, small for me to see unless I'm this close, okay? So, so uh, you know, as far as an, 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 on an app or something like that, I think the only place you can do stories is on the mobile apps, iPad. Yeah, it is, it is, phone, yeah. you know, et cetera. The other thing about stories is that, that bothers me a little bit is that they're so transient. They're so fleeting. They're only there for 24 hours and then they're gone. I like stuff. If I want to put stuff out there, I want it to be out there for somebody to find two days, four days, a week, even a month later, which is why a lot of what I feature is on my profile. So there's that featured section on my profile. I think, I think I'd rather do something on my featured section on my profile than do a story as an example. Uh, Alex Freud wanted to know, um, in terms of the profile, let me just get back up here now. When modifying your profile, is your priority to influence the reader, the algorithm, or both, and how? Oh, interesting. Very good question. I would say both, okay? And, and here's why. Another common mistake that people make is that when they put their, their profile out there and they put things onto their profile, they make it about what's in it for them, what's in it for me, as opposed to what's in it for them. Okay, so your profile should actually be focused on your audience. Now, of course, you have to figure out who that is. Okay, and in the job search, obviously, your audience is the next person in your, your, in your industry that could actually offer you a job or know somebody who, know, who could offer you a job. So, so it should be not a, about you, it should be about them. So it should be about your audience, definitely, for sure. But the, where the other piece of that comes in, as far as the algorithm is concerned, that's extremely important, is that it's also very, very important for you to be found by anybody out there. That's why putting things on your profile, like keywords and certain aspects of, of, that go on your profile so that can, that can help you get found are just as extremely important as who you're saying it to, okay? As an example, um, I, I do this all the time. Do you mind if I share my screen on this one? Absolutely not. That's why, that's why I wanted to give you the opportunity. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you something that, that happens a lot. Okay. I put, as you can see, hashtag the LinkedIn guru all over the place here. Okay. I put it on my profile. I use it in my comments. I, I, I put things on other websites that have that related to it. Okay. That's why that piece of things is, especially that hashtag as a branded hashtag is something that is very important in terms of talking to my audience, because I want people to understand what the LinkedIn guru is, but it's also extremely important from an SEO standpoint. Okay. Now let me illustrate. Here's what happens. Okay. If, if you go to Google and, and this, you know, some people are going to search for you on LinkedIn, but a lot of people are going to search for you just through the world search engine, whatever that engine happens to be for them. In my case, it happens to be Google. Okay. Let's take a look at what you find when you search Jeff Young. Okay. Now the key is here that 
there are millions, well, okay, maybe not millions, but there are actually six Jeff Young listed in the Columbus, Ohio phone book alone, okay? So there are lots more Jeff Youngs out there than me. Now, if I get really lucky, you might actually even find me on the first page. But you can, you can see here's a guy who's got a Wikipedia page. Here's a guy who's on Twitter. Ah, look, I am third. I am actually there, but it's there because LinkedIn you know, and Google get along really well. So that is the link to my LinkedIn profile there. Okay. But if you're searching for Jeff Young, you're going to find this dude that has the Wikipedia page. And I got to tell you, folks, if you actually take a second to read this guy, this is a Jeff Young that's not me. I am not the former guitar player for Megadeth. That's just not me. Now, my hair used to be that long, but that was way back in the 70s. I got to tell you. All right. So that's one of the illustrations. Getting found by your name is one of the illustrations. But I'll tell you what, if you switch instead of doing something common like, like Jeff Young, to switch to looking for the LinkedIn, the LinkedIn guru. When I search this, the first three pages of stuff are all mine. It's all about me and the stuff that I've done. So here's my tip of the week. So you want, you want more tips on LinkedIn? Do a Google search for hashtag the LinkedIn guru and then click on this thing that's from FYI.to, okay? It will literally bring up uh, the last two and a half, three years worth of, um, of, of tips that I've just done, including the one that I just did on Monday, okay? So that's an easy way to find that, okay? These are a bunch of videos that I've done. Here's my link again to my profile. Down here is the is the, where I didn't even use it, but somebody else used my hashtag that, that was talking about me on Twitter. I don't even, I, I don't go to Twitter. I never do, you know, that there's, there's, there's the, again, the LinkedIn tip of the week. Here's one that has an Instagram post. You know, here's one that was actually posted by a friend of mine that, the, who owns a, a, a group called Value Exchange over in the United Kingdom. I got, I got kudos for that as well. You, you get the idea. The point is that both of those things are important. So you've got to talk to your audience, but you also got to talk to the search engines of the world, okay? Which is why both of those things are important to join your profile. So um, the character, and that's like the the straight up line. Um, oh, the, the, um, the, the, right. Heard that this is, as a separator is not good because it has a meaning in the ATS. Is that true? I think you're right. Um, I, I've seen that before. I, I've seen a lot of people use that separator in their professional headline, as an example. Okay. And I think it, uh, I think it actually can cause um, you to not get found as far as the search is concerned, which is why I avoid special characters other than the hashtag, okay, in my professional headline. And it, it also just plain old doesn't look quite as good, okay. Uh, it, it's just a per, again a personal preference of mine. But I, if I get a cop, when you do that, you need to make sure that you do. If you're going to use a term and then another term, and you want to put that separator in between them, you got to go term space separator space term. Okay. Well, if you can accomplish that very same kind of thing with just something that's a simple, uh, simple normal thing you'd use in 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 text, which is like a comma, then I'd rather do it. I'd, I'd rather do it with a comma. Okay, because when you when you're looking at mine as an example and my my professional headline, you know, I'll go I can go directly to my profile this way. Okay, if you're looking at this, all I ever separate it with is 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 basically, okay, commas. Now you will notice, and this is an important point as well. I also use emoticons in my professional headline. Remember, we talked about you know my my praying hands and and my and my my live long and prosper. The one thing that I did about this, though, is that when this translates out into a PDF document, as an example, it doesn't. Hey, Jeff, is there any way you can make the screen bigger? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just looking at the chat. If you can do that, that would be. Thank I'm you. concentrating Thank you. on is right here, this. Okay. That better? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what, 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 when, you, when this translates out into a PDF document or a Word document or, or something along those lines, those things don't translate well. So I made sure that when I'm doing this, I in order to translate it well, I put the namaste at the, at the end of the sentence instead of the beginning of the sentence. And it's kind of the same kind of thing. In my, in, now, I do start it here, okay? So what I lose is I lose those emoticons when it translates to a PDF, but it still works, okay? 
and good, the good news is with spaces before them and after them, they have nothing to do with your search. So, so they, you know, they're not, they're not going to uh, keep you from being found. So the other one of the things which I've started to play around with also is is kind of on a status update, maybe bold facing some of my text to make it stand out because anything anytime you put an update on there, you're really limited to the, um, the what's there. Um, do you recommend that as a way to get um, more exposure to for thing for your posts to look uh, better? I think I try to make as much use possible can of the online environment as I can. So down here, normally people would not know how to do this, but down here, I actually, in my about section, I've got a call to action that I've actually put in there in what's called Unicode in bold. Okay. So I translated that to bold and put it there. Now that doesn't come out translated very well either as far as the PDF document, but I figured that most people are going to be looking at me online. So I make sure that I put it out there so people can actually read it and call attention to it by making it bold. Now, by the way, if you're, if you're wondering how I got this to be bold, okay, it's really quite simple. It's not that difficult to do, but it is a place I'm going to have to take you so that I can show you how it works, okay? It is actually a, a friend of mine has a, a, has a converter that she uh, 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 offers for free and I'm going to take you to it right now. Her name, okay, hang on. Her name is Donna Surdula. You yep. know Donna? Yep. Yep. I know Donna. Donna, yep. Donna is an excellent LinkedIn expert, knows a great deal about this, and I got this from her, so I'm very, very, very fond of her for, for that. She has on her website at this link, linkedinmakeover.com, okay, something that you should look for under her free resources that is called LinkedIn Text Formatter. And what that does is bring you up this page. And then that says that if I want to format some sort of text, and I don't care where I get the text, it could be anything, okay? If I want to format any text that I can find on the web or otherwise in bold or, 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 or other formats, all I got to do is find it, copy it, paste it, and poof, it automatically comes out bold here or in italics here or in bold italics here, you know, et cetera. And then when I want to use that text, all I got to do is take that text then, copy that text. And then when I go back over to LinkedIn, which I will do right now, okay, and I wanted to paste that text into my profile or any place else that I would, would, would want to start it, all I have to do is paste it there and voila, it's bold. Okay, Great and tip. it's that simple. And that's called Unicode. It's, it's a technical geeko thing. I'm sorry, I used to be an IT geek. <laughs> so I know what that means. But basically, finding that text converter is really just the, the simplest way to get at that. I, I agree. <clears throat> I think one question came up about just general best practices on doing job search on LinkedIn. I mean, and, and it's, it's a very open-ended question, I know. Uh, yeah. But just some very general thoughts would be great. Well, best practices. When you're using... Um, I think the first thing to concentrate on when you are using LinkedIn to, to use as a job search tool is use it for what it was intended. And that is, of course, to put your profile out there. I, I think that here's, the, here's the approach. And, and I, I think this approach actually qualifies and, 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 and really works well even if you're not looking for a job, if you're, it, it, I'm not looking for a job, but I follow this approach all the time, okay? So, that, so I approach this from what I call my three Ps, okay? And those three Ps are profile, people, and participate, okay? And from a profile pr perspective, you have to have something good out there. You, you have to represent yourself well, because if people come to your profile and people do find you, okay? You know, use it as a networking tool and, and point people to your profile all the time. And when people come to your profile, you have to have something on their, your profile that makes them want to stay. Because I don't know whether anyone else has said this, Ken, but I think the, the, the rule of thumb is that when someone comes to your profile, you get seven to 10 seconds to impress them as to whether or not to stay or not. Okay, because if they don't see something they're interested in in seven to 10 seconds, they're gone. So profile is extremely important. Do the things on your profile that make you stand out, that, that make people want to stay. 
tell them things like, please click the follow button and click see more, okay, to learn about me. It would be great to do that. And oh, by the way, if someone actually does take the time to do see more, okay, and comes down here to the very bottom, there's another thing that's here as well. If you actually took the time and have read this far, here's your reward. Copy and paste the link below. And that was the link that I showed you guys earlier that was to my tip of the week that's out on a separate, uh, a separate site, okay? So profile, starts with a profile, ends with a profile, but basically that profile is something that, and my profile's never done. I mean, I, I've been on LinkedIn since May of 2004 and it's still not done. And I'm putting all kinds of stuff out there that hopefully will help people find the value that I bring. Second P and the approach, to the best practice on LinkedIn is people. And that means connecting with people. That means talking with the people. That means engaging with the people. Okay? That, that means you know, finding the, the person, that next person who could be the best thing since sliced bread and night baseball for your job search or, 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 else, or otherwise. Someone that you can relate to, someone that you can, you know, there, there are three things that are important in real estate. Location, 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 okay? The three things that are important in utilizing LinkedIn are network, 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 okay? So network with as many, as many people as you can, talk to those people, connect with those people, and try to help those people because the more you become known as someone who helps others, they will want to help you as well. So that's the second P. First P, profile, second P, people. Okay, and there are etiquettes about connecting with people, and I won't go into all the detail, the gruesome details. Just, just best practice is that you should always send a personalized invitation to someone. Okay, which is another reason why I don't do a lot of LinkedIn on the phone because it's so easy to slip and miss by just hitting the connect button instead, instead of hitting more and sending a personalized invite. Yes, you can send a personalized invite, but you got to know how on the mobile app. Okay. So connect with as many people as you possibly can as the second P. The third P is participate. This, this gets back to what I talk about as a, as a common mistake as well. People don't spend nearly enough time on LinkedIn. Now, I don't want you to spend all day on LinkedIn. I want you to know how to use the tool and be effective. But the best time that you could spend on LinkedIn is not necessarily on your profile, is not necessarily connecting with people. It is out here on your homepage feed and going through this process and actually liking and commenting and engaging with people out here because that will actually start conversations. And that's a best practice. Actually go out there and add value by starting the conversations. And, you know, while I'm here, you know, a lot of people don't like to come to their homepage feed because I keep hearing, they keep telling me, oh, Jeff, I don't want to go look at my homepage feed. It's got a bunch of spam on it. Well, you know what? That's because you haven't taken care of that spam. You have not told LinkedIn what you really want. And the one, there are a couple of ways that you can tell LinkedIn what you really want. First is, if you like something, then say you like it or use one of these other emoticons. But more importantly, if you really, really want to see more of something, comment on it and comment on it with a comment that has at least five words in it. Okay. Nice post, great article, way to go are not comments. They're just words. Okay. Nice post because I really found this interesting because of my experience and et cetera is a better idea. Great article because I really used the section where you talked about this is a better idea, okay? So those two things are, are, are extremely important. Now the other, and, and the more that you give LinkedIn that feedback, okay, the algorithm will look at what you've told it and give you more of it. So for heaven's sake, if you see something that is spam, do not comment on it and say that it is, oh my gosh, this is the worst spam I ever saw, okay? Don't do that because LinkedIn algorithm will look at your comment and go, oh, you like this stuff? I'll give you a whole bunch more of it. Here's some more spam for you, okay? Instead of commenting on it, here's what you need to do. You need to use the magic three dots. On any post that's out here, click on the magic three dots and you can unfollow the person if you don't want to follow what that person says anymore. Unfollowing, by the way, will be just, it says stay connected, but stop seeing their posts, okay? That's what unfollow does. Or you can get even more definitive and you can actually, I don't want to see this and then tell LinkedIn why 
you don't want to see that was one of these options. I'm not interested in this. I've seen too many of posts like this. I've seen too many posts from this author. I've seen this post before. This post is old or, or, or it's other something else. But give LinkedIn that feedback and your feed will get better. And so I spend probably 15 to 20 minutes to a half an hour every single day out here on my feed engaging with people and giving them comments. And I get comments back. That's why but right now, by the way, someone has commented back on what I said, because that's why I've got four notifications and one message up here as we go through the process. OK, I'm, I'll shut up and ask for more. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing that 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 goes along with that is do you have a recommended idea as to how often to post and maybe when to post as well? Yeah. Um, also, that's another one of those it depends kinds of questions. Yep. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, there is I actually did write an article about this, so I'll show you the article and then you can go look at it later. But I'll tell you what I'm uh, what I said in the article a little, here in a minute. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go to my article and show it to you. Uh, you can find, by the way, my articles or anybody else's articles by going to a person's profile, scrolling down okay, to where it says, see all activity. So scroll down just a little ways and say where it says, see all activity. Click on see all activity. And then when it comes up, tell it what kind of activity you want to see. And in this case, I want to show you my articles. Okay. So if you click on an article and then open one of these articles, you're going to see that, that I actually have what's called a newsletter on LinkedIn. And this, you literally, once you open one of these, you will see a subscribe button down here and you, you can subscribe to my newsletter. Now, yes, that does mean you'll get an email from me, but I only publish once a month. So that means you're going to get one email from me a month when I actually publish my newsletter. But the one that I wanted to show you is one that's a little ways down here. And it's one that's become, is, that was very popular because I used it to illustrate kind of my philosophy on this, the anatomy of a LinkedIn post. Okay, so you had to scroll down a little ways. Okay, here's what this, so, so open this one and, you, and this is also, I believe, part of my newsletter, so you can subscribe to it there as well. This is kind of what I, I, as far as the it depends is concerned though, okay? When you're thinking about posting content, when you're thinking about posting anything, okay, on LinkedIn, keep this in mind, okay? Uh, it comes back to, you might've noticed the three C's on my, uh, on my profile, I went in my in my uh, uh, professional headline, you know, I, I'm volunteer and I get paid in three C's: coffee, conversation, or occasionally chocolate. Okay, well, this is three more C's. Okay, the three C's here are related to posting. First of all, content is king. Okay, in other words, content is really where the value will get added. So put some content out there that is interesting, not necessarily to you, but to the people you want to attract. Okay, so that and it should be content. If you're thinking about doing content, you know, people have a lot of knowledge. Everybody has a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. So talk about something that you know. Okay, so content is king. Now, the next thing, though, to, to think about, and more importantly, though, is that if content is king, context is King Kong. Yes, I'll even beat my chest on that one. Okay, because of the fact that. King Kong, context trumps, trumps content. It, you can have the greatest content in, in the world, but if it has no context for anybody else out there who wants to read it, you're just whistling Dixie, okay? You're just adding noise, not value, all right? Now, third C, content is king, context is King Kong, but consistency is King Kong's mother, okay? And... King Kong's mother trumps King Kong, believe me, okay? Just as everybody's mother trumps, trumps them. The point being is that consistency is what really has built my following of 17,000 plus subscribers, my following of 37,000 plus followers, putting consistent content out there, consistent from the standpoint of the subject, consistent from the standpoint of sometimes timing as well. Now, let's talk about that. Uh, that was a long-winded answer, I apologize, to get to how often should I post, <laughs> okay? You should post when it fits the right audience and you, okay? Now, literally, I could give you all kinds of statistics about, you know, ab about what day of the week is better to post, how many times is better to post. Here, here's the thing, okay? 
you could literally post once a minute out there on LinkedIn, or you could post once a month out there on LinkedIn. That's the range that I, I that some people have asked me about. Okay, is it okay if I post once a month? Is it okay if I post once a minute? Okay, the answer is yeah, it's okay if you're getting an audience and that works for you, but I don't think either one of those is actually the right answer. Because if you post once a minute, somebody's gonna look at that and see that you just popped up a minute later and go, oh no, not another post from Jeff Young. Shut him up, will you somebody? Okay, that's too much noise. If you post once a month, it goes out there and it just kind of sits there and gets no audience because it's got no traction, nobody knows. The difference, and one of the different ones that does get you some traction once a month is this one, the newsletter. If you're posting a newsletter once a month, it's actually gonna go tell, out there and tell everybody who's a subscriber that you just posted something, but a normal post won't do that, okay? The algorithm doesn't work it that way. So once a month, once a minute, not right. For me personally, that has been, from a consistency standpoint, a posting twice a week. Now, do I post on the same day? Mostly, sort of, okay? It's kind of a range, okay? But here's the consistency from my standpoint. I do two types of posts a week. I do one post on either a Sunday or Monday that I call my LinkedIn tip of the week, okay? So if you wanna post a tip of the week, tip of the week is fine, but you probably ought to post it on the same day each week, okay? My second post is either done on a Thursday or Friday, and I call that one my hashtag guru good news. So I do, and by the way, the, the, the first one is about you know a tip. The second one is usually not even about me, it's about somebody else. I highlight something that someone else did in my Guru Good News. So it's about somebody else. Or, and I'll, hi I'll highlight either someone like Ken or Kevin or Kevin D. Turner or, or Bryn Tillman or you know, whoever else I think their, their, content, did, uh, their content was good enough that week to, to be useful to my network then I will, I will try to uh, post that out there as well. So consistency wise, twice a week is really, really working for me. And it's working when I do something that is the theme post of my tip of the week on Sunday, Monday and my Google Good News on Thursday, Friday. Hopefully that answered your question. I know it started <laughs> with it depends, but that's how it depends on me. I did. I know one of the things that people have a big question about and this comes up all the time is Putting on your profile, like maybe you're you're out of work now, um, but you know LinkedIn may 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 uh, if you don't have a current job, it may affect your your visibility. And there's so many answers about that. So I'm just curious, what yeah. do you suggest in a case like that? Yeah, that's also a personal preference. I have heard both things. I think, you know, when it ultimately comes down to what you put on your profile, how you represent yourself, you know, et, et cetera you have to be comfortable with it, okay? And I gotta tell you, in my first uh, seminar today uh, with the other can, that same very that very same question came up, you know, should I put the open to work symbol around my picture, my profile picture, okay? And the answer is, yeah, if you're comfortable showing that, if you're comfortable saying that. Now, if I was in a job and I was looking for a job, I can almost guarantee you I would not put that there because that's obviously open to the world that you are, you're saying that you are looking for work. Okay, so, you know, your employer might frown upon that. But, but the point being is that if you don't tell anybody, nobody will know. Andrew. Okay? There are options, there are alternatives here that you can be open to recruiters and tell recruiters that you're looking, but not have that symbol on your, 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 um, your profile picture. But honestly, if you're comfortable with it and you want people to know, then I say put it there. It, 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 can, it cannot hurt you from that standpoint if there's nobody who's going to notice it, that would be bad, okay? So the way that works, and that's on your profile, by the way, just so while we're here, it's, it's related to this one. This probably will be underneath your profile as well. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But because I, I haven't turned it on, if you turn it on, it probably won't, won't be there. But since I haven't turned it on, this option of clicking show you, and by the way, this is also in privacy and settings, so that's easy to find. But show recruiters that you're open to work, okay? You click on that, you tell the recruiters what kind of work, what kind of job titles you're looking for, what locations you might be looking for, if you're open to remote working, what kind of start date you're interested in, what kind of employment types you're interested in. By the way, multiples of these are okay. 
okay, kind of thing. And then you click add to profile. Now, the choice you can make there here, that's setting up and telling people that you are looking for work, okay? But the choice you get then in terms of what you show as far as your profile picture is concerned is below here, slightly hidden because LinkedIn loves to hide stuff, okay? Slightly hidden, if you pull this down, you can tell who sees your open, either all LinkedIn members or only recruiters. And if you click only recruiters, you will be open to recruiters, but that symbol will not show up on your profile picture. If you do, that's what that's the difference here. That one actually says open to work. This one is just your regular profile photo. So you get to choose. And I, again, I, I think that if you're comfortable putting it out there, you need to tell people that you're looking for work. Because if you don't tell anybody, you'll never get help from your network necessarily. The other question that comes up a lot in my sessions is basic versus premium. Should I yeah. just should I keep basic? Should I try premium? What's the pro, what's the pros and cons? It actually came up again today. I love it. Should I pay or should I go? <laughs> right. Okay. That also depends. Um, there are reasons to pay for LinkedIn. Usually, those reasons are: you are a recruiter, you're a salesperson, or you're a business owner. Ken, you pay. You 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 have premium, don't you? Um, yeah, I pay, but I was grandfathered in, so I'm not paying anything okay. close to what others are. Well, okay, so so there are reasons to pay. Here's, a, here's an interesting statistic that I don't think a lot of people know. Out of the 770 million people that are actually on LinkedIn, only 40% of them actually pay for LinkedIn. So six out of every 10 people on LinkedIn don't pay for LinkedIn. I'm one of those six out of 10 people. As I said before, I've been on LinkedIn since May of 2004, and I have never paid LinkedIn one red penny, and I don't ever plan on it. Now, it's, it's very difficult to see on, on, on this screen because it's usually up here. Yeah, okay, it's up here in the upper right-hand corner, which might be behind the, the list of people, okay, down the right-hand side. So if you have to move that, there's a try premium for free up here uh, link. So try that if you really want to, to do it. But here's the thing about that, okay? If you're going to try premium for free, you need to do two things to make sure that you really get what you want out of it. If you try premium for free, beat it up, beat LinkedIn up, try to figure out exactly what that, that, that premium gets you that the free would not get you. So pound on it, pound on it, pound on it. Okay. Second thing that I highly recommend is that you ought to put something out there that will remind you that if it gets to be five days before those 30 days are up and you are not interested in keeping the, the LinkedIn premium, that you cancel it. You drop it like a bad habit, okay? I don't care what it takes. Put post-it notes on your refrigerator, put neon signs on your garage. I don't care what it takes, but tell yourself something that will make you cancel this thing because you do not want them charging your credit card because I have heard horror stories about this time and time again, there are two words that LinkedIn cannot define. Refund and prorate. <laughs> okay, so try it. It's not a bad thing, try it, but beat it up and figure out what it's really there for. Now, the other thing, as I said before, there is absolutely no substitute for knowing how this tool works. So, 95% of the people that I come across, at least 95% of the people I come across, haven't even scratched the surface of what they can do on LinkedIn for free. So I don't mean to be nasty about this, but I got to ask this question. It might sound a little nasty. How is paying for LinkedIn going to make you any better at it? Okay. Just because you threw money at it doesn't going to solve your problem. What would solve your problem is learning how to use it. Okay. So in my, in my case, it has never been worthwhile for me to actually pay for LinkedIn. But it is worthwhile depending on what you need out of LinkedIn. Well, I know LinkedIn. Um, Alex wanted to know, what is the number one, the number one reason to be on LinkedIn? And it's, it's, it's I mean, we, Alex and I, you know, this is a question basically to ask the group or to answer, have you answer the group. The number one reason to be on LinkedIn. Okay, I'll answer it two ways. I, I think the number one reason to be on LinkedIn is it is the best professional networking tool in the world. Uh, and 
And networking is like air. You need it to survive, okay? For me, LinkedIn is more than just a job search tool. It's more than just a professional networking tool. For me, personally, LinkedIn, for me, the number one reason to be on LinkedIn is to learn something. Literally, I can access the global sphere of 770 million of my closest friends. <laughs> well, they're only one connection away, let's put it that way, yeah, usually, okay? Well, one connect button away anyway. I literally have a world full of possibilities that when I ask a question, someone might actually be able to answer it. Someone might be able to teach me something. And you know, that's kind of another thing that I believe about a teacher, that if I'm really a teacher, I am also a lifelong learner. And that is how I use LinkedIn. People teach me stuff about LinkedIn all the time. It is a great cooperative tool. It is a great tool that, 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 that can help you learn whatever it is that you want to learn. And oh, by the way, one of the things that people sometimes actually pay for is because they need LinkedIn learning, okay? LinkedIn learning comes with the premium package. But you know what? If you actually have a library card, you can get LinkedIn learning free through your library. So again, for me, I hope that answered that question. It, that, yeah. that is also a very individualized kind of thing. Um, but for me, LinkedIn has been the best networking tool in the world and the best learning tool in the world. Um, it's amazing. So I, I see another question. How many profile views shown on the dashboard should you aim for if you're utilizing it for job search purposes? How many, how many what? Um, on the dashboard, how many, uh, I believe it was profile views. Oh, profile that? views? Yeah. Well, that one also is, it depends, okay? If, if you're doing stuff right, this number will be constantly going up, okay? or at least staying the same at a fairly high number. So the higher number is the better number, okay? But again, the opportunity is there. You know, the, the, that's the thing. If you're getting to the right audience, five views of your profile could be just as good as 5,000, okay? Because of the fact that, you know, more is, okay, a little better, but more is, is really focused on who is looking, not necessarily. Okay, and, and by the way, that's one of the reasons sometimes people pay for LinkedIn, because when you go here, you can actually see more than just the last five people who have looked at your profile. Okay, so I see Ralph, Diane, this person is anonymous, and Janice, I guess, uh, if I don't mispronounce that name, I hope. Okay, and then one LinkedIn member who is anonymous as well. And I, I got to tell you, folks, I only get to see five, but if you don't have you know, I, and I get, by the way, about 40 or 50 hits on my profile a day. Okay? And so from that perspective, you know, I, I do go out pretty often and look at who's viewed my profile. But no, ma no matter what I paid LinkedIn, it would never turn that person into a name or that person into a name, corporate finance specialist into a name or one LinkedIn member into a name because they are going to remain anonymous because they chose to be anonymous. And paying for it will not get you that. So sometimes paying, getting to see the last 90 days worth of people is a possible plus that you might want to consider paying right. for. It. But you know, that's okay. just never been worth 30 bucks a month for me. So well, how does it work that you can get um, through your library LinkedIn Learning? Is that, um, is every library different that way? Is it just a, a thing Possibly, you have to check with your local library. Here in Columbus, Ohio, for example, if I have a library card, I can actually log on remotely and I can use LinkedIn Learning okay, remotely as me through the library because the library provides it as a service. It's really nice. It's really nice. Service. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I, I think that that's, that's great. I think, um, you know, one, I'm going to, if it's okay, um, I'm going to attempt to open this up to see if people want to um, unmute and oh. ask questions. Sure. So, um, do you want to, can you stop sharing your screen? Yeah, I was, gonna say you want, I was just going to ask. You want yeah, me to yeah. Stop so that if anyone feels comfortable unmuting, we'll give this a shot. I know. Oh. Anyone? Please. Hey, Jeff, it's Dean. The uh, LinkedIn uh, premium also gives you job insights on postings. You can get some of those same insights for free. Uh, and again, one of the key insights is, 
what people are at what companies and how you can connect with them and you don't have to pay for that. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, there is one misconception though, I think Dean, is that paying for LinkedIn will get you higher in the search results. I don't believe that's true. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you shook your head at the same time I did. I don't think so, okay. LinkedIn would love you to think that, okay. But I don't think so. Uh, what gets you higher in the search results is more activity and, and putting the right stuff on your profile. So yeah. So Elliot, you have a question? Um, yes, first of all, Jeff, um, really, I mean, they're just, just taking down notes. It's a pleasure looking, listening to you. I'm learning a lot. Um, <laughs> one of the things you mentioned was headline names. And one of the things someone advised me to do, it's a little bit tricky, is actually using your name to basically put your whole name on the first name and what you really want to grab people is your last name because that'll go with you. I did that and recruiters started calling and haven't landed, but I've got, because this is my question. This is my question. Sometimes I'm interested in a particular company or I see a particular posting. And what I would like to be able to do, Jeff, is sort of roundabout way, trying to find the recruiter associated, if there is such a thing, associated with that. Why? Because if I can have a personal relationship with the recruiter, there's a better chance that the recruiter, not going to tell me, but works with the company and knows someone there and possibly put my resume, whatever it is. And I'm more than happy to do that. But I haven't found the way of being able to reverse, in other words, using LinkedIn, you know, to go off of a career board of company ABC, look mm -hmm. up ABC Glassdoor, this glass, whatever, but to be able to put a name of a recruiter, several courses to say, okay, they're handling that, get in touch with them. Can LinkedIn do that? You, you see what I'm saying? Because one would have better chances of getting in if I could find them and say, hey guys, I'm showing you this position. Can you help me? Oh yeah, show, sure. thank you. We work, I was yeah. gonna get in touch with you, but thank you for getting in touch with me. I'll well, take a, um, a breath now, let you speak. No, first of all, uh, the, that's, that's a great approach because that's actually utilizing LinkedIn. I think one of the best ways that it can be utilized. Yes. Um, the, the thing that I recommend is that if you've just, and, and you can do it without having done this, but, but definitely if you have already actually gone to their website or, or someplace else and you've actually applied for a job, then if you've applied for a particular job, the very first thing you need to go do is, is go out on LinkedIn, look up the company, and then see if there's anybody at all that you know at that company in the first place, right? I understand. Yeah. That I understand. You've done that, right? Yes. Okay. Well, if you know to do that, and I don't think I even have to illustrate this, but remember what I talked about in terms of those filters that I talked about before? Okay. Yeah. Okay. On a search, all of those filters still exist. So you've done that. You said, oh, who have I got that's a first degree connection at this company? Right, who have right. I got that's a second degree connection at this right. company? Because it still might work. Okay. Right. If I know somebody who knows somebody, I still might be able to get there. Right. But what you're trying to look for is a person at the company that has a particular title, right? No, recruiter. possibly a third party, a consignment recruiter that's out okay, there, it nothing be. to do with the company, but has a relationship with it that'll make sure that my application will not find its way into the waste paper yeah. basket because the person anonymous isn't out there. That well, may, yeah, that may be posting jobs, but hasn't gotten in touch with me okay. through LinkedIn. How can I find well, first out? First of all, if it's if it's not an internal recruiter, yes. then you're going to have to do it through networking. You're going to actually have to find somebody at the company to talk to and ask them who the recruiter would be for this. That's kind okay. of the only option. Okay. okay. However, yes. however, if it is internal to the company, all I would recommend is that mm. at, once you've got the list of employees that you know, you know, that are second degree connections for you yeah. or, or whatever, the list of employees at a company, all you have to do is add the filter and go to the all filters section that says title and put recruiter in there. And you might actually find a one or two people who are actually recruiters at a given company. Say that again, please. Okay. You want me to show you? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pick a company that I know I've got some connections at. So I'm going to, I'm going to share. It's exactly what you did before. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pick a company. I'm going to search for a company. This is a company that's a big company here in Columbus, Ohio, Cardinal Health. Okay. Uh -huh. So this might actually give me the, the possibility. All right. So I brought Cardinal Health up. Okay. In terms of LinkedIn, number of employees, Cardinal Health has 27,939 employees. Well, I'm going to click on that because I am going to start that as a search. This is actually now results. 
okay, of a search right. that says here are all the company, here are all the people, okay, on LinkedIn that oh. are at that current company employees. Okay. Uh -huh. Now I might want to make sure that I kind of narrow it down a little bit. Okay. So I might actually do this as well. This is not necessarily related to what I'm going to show you, but but I'm going to narrow it down just a touch because I want to see only the people who are in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, so now it's still a big number because they're, they're right, based right. in Columbus, Ohio, okay? But it's down quite a bit. All right, here's the one I'm talking about, okay? Under all filters, okay? One of the filters in here is down below, you should be able to get to something that says title. Type in recruiter and show those results. 71 results. Beautiful. Now I've at least stipulated that these people is a this person is a recruiter at Cardinal Health, and this person is a recruiter at Cardinal Health, and this person is a recruiter talent acquisition at Cardinal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Beautiful. And and if you get one of these people on, maybe the interview type qu question you might ask them is, could you tell me, and you know the term, I don't, you're something provider. In other words, every company typically has yeah, a recommended I, list of people when they bring on contractors, yep. they go through them. And once you have that information now, you can go to that provider and kind of get a chance of see what they're interested in. Do I match up? Oh, by the way, I understand yep. you're a provider of so-and-so. What? Oh, sure. Thank you. We have such and such. Yep. And now you've essentially found someone that does business with them who you can approach and they will mm -hmm. make revenue on that. And it's a win-win yep. situation. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's called preferred vendor. That's but, it, preferred but, vendor. But in but in many many instances, when it's a recruiter, it might be a retained recruiter. Got it. But because that's they, beautiful. Got but, them on retainer to use. But you see what you've just you see what you've just shown us. It's just the ability to go through you know your companies mm -hmm. to go through the titles to yep. see the people. You can certainly approach them. You're not hitting and, them and up. Again, for it's a matter of just understanding how this works. Beautiful. Because if you've Thank never you taken the time to click on all filters, you might not know of that, that that title even existed there. Exactly. So Thank Sophie, you. I see Sophie has a Sophie. Did you have a question? Thank you. By Thank the you way? very much. My pleasure. So Sophie had her hand up. You have yep, unmute yourself. Yep. There you go. Yes, I have a question. Um, Jeff. Since LinkedIn is so important for professional networking, why so many people like you just uh, prevent other people to connect unless we know your email? Ah, <laughs> excellent I question. Was, I was wondering if that was going to come up, and that's, no, I'd that's love okay. to hear the answer okay. to that. Jeff. Okay. That is also, by the way, Sophie, just a personal preference of mine. Okay. I am not out on LinkedIn to make the next connection. I am out on LinkedIn to help, okay? So my philosophy is, and, and one of the things that I've, the, one of the reasons I have required my email to connect with me, a couple of different reasons, but one of the reasons is because without knowing my email, I got a lot of generic connection requests or spammy connection requests from people who were trying to sell me stuff, okay? By requiring my email, it also feeds another desire of mine which is to have a conversation and actually meet, okay, with someone. Now that could be locally, geographically, or virtually, okay, as well on LinkedIn before we connect, okay, because of the fact that I'm not here to get just another connection. I'm here to help. And you do not have to be connected with me for me to help you because you and I can have conversations on the comments, out on, out on the feed, if you comment on my stuff. You and, I, you and I can have conversations you know, in, in other ways in terms of you know, without being connected. So honestly, it's really a desire of mine to actually meet with someone before I actually make the connection with them on LinkedIn. And because I've been doing this for 13 years, there have literally been thousands and thousands and thousands of people that I have seen in groups like this, okay? And honestly, I don't really think it would be a benefit for me to connect with all 80 of you folks if I can help you in some other way. So please don't think that's being standoffish or, or, or that I do not want to network. I do, but I really just want to be able to converse with somebody and talk with somebody before 
uh, you know, meet them, quote unquote, meet, meet them virtually before I actually connect with them. There actually was one person who said he was going to be on the call here today that, that actually sent me an invitation. So he must have found my email. Okay. So, you know, a, a lot of people do what I do from, again, the standpoint of trying to eliminate the, the generic ones and the spammy invitations to connect. But a lot of people will also put their email in their about section. So if actually someone actually took the time to read their about section, you, they'd actually see it. My email is not in my about section. Oh, my email, it's funny. And, it's funny, my email Jeff. Is, is, is available you know, after, after we can have. I tried to connect with Jeff for two years. It just did not happen. And we, but we stayed in touch in different ways and eventually we just connected. I mean, I think that's one of the challenges. I mean, some people, I think Kevin's the same way. He puts, he requires an email address as well. Um, and, you know, it is it is a personal preference. And I think what's great about this is you're here and you can explain that because it's a perception as much as anything else. Well, and Ken, I think here's another thing that I didn't, an aspect I didn't mention, okay? And that is that a part of why I do that is out of respect to you and other people who are in my existing network. Because if I connected with anybody who could fog a mirror, they would then have a link to you so that they could get at you as well. And I don't want them coming through me to sell you something, to give you, you know, to, to hassle you, you know, et cetera. So again, it's another way of really just trying to be respectful of my network. And, you know, and, and I realize how it looks, but I actually have a, I, I have actually answered that question a lot. And I actually have a template that I sometimes put in comments or I put back in emails that says, here are my reasons why doing this. But, and, and by the way, just follow me first. If you follow me, you get a chance. If you follow, you get a chance to see my stuff. If you comment on my stuff, that's exactly how you and I ended up, I ended up doing it. We had so many conversations that I felt like I was connected to you already. Right. right. So I ended up sending you a connection request. So one, one final question, I guess, because we're running a little bit over. Thank you very much, by the way. For, uh, <laughs> I knew it would, that's friend. okay. Um, should you put your email in your about section or only speak via LinkedIn with recruiters or anyone? I'm trying to understand what that is. Regina, do you want to unmute yourself and explain what you meant here? <clears throat> yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, Jeff. Um, hi. It's Ken. Um, I was just wondering, because I was listening to what you were saying before, you know, how you get, you know, too many spammed too many times, but should we... Like I have my email address on there. Should people put their address in their about oh, section and or their phone number? Yeah. yeah. Or just keep it without it and people could just talk to you like what you're just saying, whether it's following, whether it's connecting in any way with recruiters or with other fellow LinkedIn people. Just keep it within the platform. Yeah. I, I think, and, and that is a really, really valid and interesting question. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a gentleman who I know very, very well. And I use him to illustrate what a good, um, what a good, good background um, pro, uh, photo looks like, because this is, this is really his brand, okay? Uh, but, so I use him a lot for that. But he also does it exactly like this way. And I think, again, this is, you've got to be comfortable with this. You've got to be, you've got to be cognizant of spam. I, do, I in my, a lot of my seminars, recommend to people who are in the job search because they will not necessarily be connected with every single recruiter that sees their profile, okay? I recommend that they actually do put their email and cell phone number out there, okay? Because 